I'm sure we're all familiar with the space race. If you aren't familiar with it, which, first of all, do you go to school? Do, do you? Are you homeschooled? You should know this if you're homeschooled. Um, if you don't know, I guess I'll have to teach you. I, I don't mind giving you a little history lesson. The space race was a 20th century competition between two Cold War rivals, the United States and the Soviet Union, to achieve superior space flight capability. It had its origins in the ballistic missile-based nuclear arms race between the two nations following World War II, and had its peak with the more particular moon race to land on the moon between the U.S. moonshot and the Soviet moonshot programs. The technological advantage demonstrated by space flight achievement was seen as necessary for national security and became part of a symbolism and ideology of time. The space race brought pioneering launches of satellite, artificial satellites, robotic space probes to the moon, Venus, Mars, and human spaceflight in low Earth orbit, and ultimately to the moon. Public interest in space travel originated in the 1951 publication of the Soviet Youth Magazine and was promptly picked up by the U.S. magazines. The competition began on July 30th, 1955, when the United States announced its intent to launch artificial satellites for the International Geophysical Year. Four days later, the Soviet Union announced... um. They basically responded back by declaring that they would also launch a satellite in the near future. The launching of satellites was enabled by developments in ballistic missile capabilities since the end of World War II. The competition gained Western public attention with the Sputnik crisis, when the USSR achieved the first successful satellite launch, Sputnik 1, on October 4, 1957. It gained momentum when the USSR sent the first human, Yuri Gagarin, into space with the orbital flight of Vostok 1 on April 12, 1961. These were followed by a string of of other early firsts achieved by the Soviets over the next few years. Gagarin's flight led U.S. President John F. Kennedy to raise the stakes on May 25, 1961, by asking the U.S. Congress to commit to the goal of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth before the end of the decade. Both countries began developing super heavy lift and launch vehicles, with the U.S. successfully deploying the Saturn V, which was large enough to send a three-person orbiter and two-person lander to the moon. Kennedy's moon landing goal was achieved by July 1969 with the flight of Apollo 11. I bring this little history lesson up because around the 60s and 70s, space was so popular, so popular. Like, it's crazy how the space race was like the most popular thing back then. And because of the space race, all of these cartoons launched. A good example being the Jetsons came out in 1961, which if you paid attention to that space lesson thing, Kennedy literally said in May 25th of 1961 that he wanted to, you know, land a man on the moon. Speaking of the Jetsons, that's just one of the space cartoons that were released around that time of the space race, crazy, hoogie, maga, whatever. The cartoons we're talking about today, there were two space cartoons that we're going to be talking about. Um, today, we're talking about when Josie and the Pussycats went into space, and the next video will be when the Partridge family went into space. So, the Josie and the Pussycats Lost in a, like Outer Space cartoon thingy. It's technically season two of Josie and the Pussycats, as season one lasted from 1970 to 1971, and Josie and the Pussycats in Outer Space came out in 1972. It says a sequel spinoff series, but I I'm pretty sure these two shows, you know, they're kind of they're kind of connected. Bear in mind, this isn't the first time a show from back then has done that. Well, not really back then, as Sequest came out in, like, the 90s. Sequest DSV specifically came out in 1983, and they're, um, they had about, like, three seasons, but I think their next season was called Sequest 2032. Hold on, it was called something. Uh, yeah, 2032. That was, they, they titled season three, I think, 2032. So, this isn't really the first time... A show would just, you know, would just do that. Now look, who, who am I to judge sending cartoon characters into space, you know? Well, let me ask you this. Out of all the cartoon characters you could send into space, why would you send Josie and the Pussycat? No, no, you know what? No. Why do I even bother asking this question considering they sent the they they sent the Partridge family into space. They sent the motherfucking Partridge family into space. Space <sighs> And they gave the Partridge family a talking robot dog. They gave the Partridge family a talking robot dog. They gave the Partridge family a talking robot dog who was also Voiced by Frank Welker because the man is always either voicing a dog, a car, a, a talking d d raccoon, I don't even know.
but I'm getting a bit ranty. I, you know, I really shouldn't be. Also, I'm wearing new clothes, as you could tell. These are my jammies. I'm in my pajamas because I'm I'm gonna go sleep after I make this video. So let's just talk about the show. You know, let's talk about the not really a show. It's it's a sequel spinoff series. But like I don't understand what it means by that. But um, anyways. This version of this series launched the characters in the outer space. The opening credits sequence shows the group taking promotional photos at the launch site of a new spaceship, but it's unclear whether they were the ship's assigned crew or just simply publicity guests. A jealous Alexandra elbows the cast of Sign to steal the spotlight from Josie yet again, which causes an all domino effect so that they all stumble into the ship and then they get accidentally launched into space. That's right, it's all her fault. It's all her fault. She launched them into space. It's all her fault. For some reason, Val knows how to pilot the ship, but, um, whatever. Every episode of the show has the Pussycats encountering a strange new world where they would encounter and often be captured by various aliens of the week, um, before escaping and attempting to return to Earth. No matter what scenario, though, Alexandra remains determined to stop Josie from getting too close to Alan. A typical ending for an episode is they meet a wise, benevolent person who programs the ship's course for Earth, only to have a clumsy action by Alexandra, or... Occasionally, Melody or Brother Alex, not Melody's brother Alex, but Alexandra's brother Alex, set the ship to the wrong trajectory once again. Damn, bro, so you're telling me that, that Alexandra is the basically the main reason why these guys are in space. They're never going to see their families ever again, and it's all her fault. I don't even know if they ever came back to Earth because they never made like another season after this. I would have loved just, just another season of Josie and the Pussycats where they come back to Earth or something like that, or like a movie. A movie. Oh my god. A movie of Josie and the Pussycats in Outer Space. Oh, I am so smart. Skipping all of the musical stuff, Josie and the Pussycats in Outer Space also added the character of Bleep, a pet-sized fluffy alien off by Melody, who seemed to be the only one who could understand the creature's language. He only says Bleep repeatedly, and numerous other alien animals encountered. Bleep and Sebastian fluctuate between competitors or good friends throughout the series, with Dom Messick providing the nonverbal chatter of both pets. I think Sebastian was a cat. I didn't watch Josie, I swear. I'm I'm really sorry. I didn't I didn't watch I didn't watch Josie. I didn't watch Josie. The series premise is similar to Lost in Space, which was a science fiction show that was like made in like, you know, 1965 or whatever. Particularly that series' is third season, where the formerly marooned ship was allowed to visit a new planet each week, a la Star Trek. Alexandra's role parallels that of Dr. Zachary Smith. Both are unpleasant characters, often odd to the rest of the crew, whose blunders caused the initial loss in space. Bleep is similar to Debbie the Bloop, Penny Robinson's pet who was played by a chimpanzee in a costume. They put a chimpanzee in a costume? No, not the chimpanzee. No. Josie and the Pussycats in Outer Space only had like 16 episodes, and as I mentioned in my previous Josie video, it was released on, alongside with, you know, Josie and the Pussycats, rather than being separate. So, bit weird, and also, as I mentioned in my other video, Josie and Josie and the Pussycats in Outer Space were both available on Boomerang and HBO Max for a while, and um, eventually they weren't, they were removed from the apps, and then they Warner Archive released HD versions of both intros, I think, on YouTube. Well, not, I don't think, I don't know about the Lost in Space one, but the, but the other one, yeah, but that one, yeah, that, 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 that did, you know, that did get that, you know. And that's really all I can say about it. Like, there's not much else I can really say this. No one even talks about this when it comes to Josie and the Pussycats. All they ever talk about is the, it's either the comics, the cartoon, the movie. Or them being on that god-awful show, Riverdale. I'm telling y'all, I don't mind them being in Riverdale. I just hate Riverdale, okay? When I when I saw Josie on Riverdale, I had a gut feeling. I was like, oh my god. They're gonna put, they're gonna put poor Josie and the Pussycats in this god-awful show. Because, like, keep in mind, season one and two of, of Riverdale wasn't that bad. It, it didn't really go downhill after that. And um, that was their first mistake. Their second mistake was not immediately making a sequel show or, like, spinoff show called Josie and the Pussycats. <laughs> they ended up making a show about a character from the show called Katie Keene. That was their second mistake. Uh, their third mistake was um, um, giving Cheryl and Betty powers... Because I forgot that Sabrina um, is technically connected to um, 
to, to, to the Archie comics. I forgot about Sabrina being... Oh! <laughs> Fun fact about Sabrina's TV show in 1996, it ended the year before I was born. Wasn't my fault. Just like how Friends ending wasn't my fault. Like, <laughs> I like that sometimes I need to preface that I didn't end Friends. Okay, Friends ended the, like the month after I was born. Like a couple days after I was born, Friends ended. I had no part in that. I wasn't even, I was merely a baby when Friends ended. I was a newborn child when Friends ended. So I had no part in that. But yeah, that's it for the video. You know, nothing else I can say about the, you know, Josie and the Pussycats, you know, outer space thing. Keep in mind, I will be still talking about Josie in the next video about her spinoffs and spoofs. I had to, I, I feel like, you know, I should mention that because... It's, it's, it's true. I am going to do that. Um, so. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm going now. I'm going. I'm going to go take a sleepy sleep. Well, first I have to edit this video. And then I'm going to go sleepy sleep. So, bye. Editing, Amy. I know you're expecting the outro right now. But I just found out that Alexandra is in the Katie Keene live action show and not only is she in the katie keen live action show why is he even calling it that whatever she's in the katie keen show and apparently she's not even alex's like actual sister she's his stepsister alex i'm sorry for you bro i'm sorry that that's your stepsister i'm sorry for him like i'm sorry for you dude <laughs>